All right. I don't know if anyone's going to join tonight, but I'm going to get started on trying to break Spelljammer, Pirates of Realm Space. <clears throat> so I'm going to get started on this. Apparently, this is a very broken game. And uh, it has a lot of problems, including the final boss not spawning. Uh, carry over to your new save game when you die and restart or like quit without saving. Uh, so it's going to be kind of interesting to try to work around the issues that it has. So I'm going to let this amazing 3D... 3D intro play for a minute. And then we're going to create a captain. Hey, it's Macaw and Chubo. <laughs> How's it going, guys? We're going to try to do it. <laughs> try to get somewhere in this game. I'm actually going to try to play legit for the first part, but uh, I have a backup strat if uh, legit doesn't work. So, first we're going to create our captain. I'm playing almost exclusively with the keyboard because the like the mouse controls in this game are really janky and it's hard to get it to do stuff quickly. But uh, almost everything has keyboard shortcuts because this is actually, I think this is actually based on a, the old gold box engine uh, that they modified heavily for everything except the space flight. Um, but we'll get to that a little later when we see some of the not so great combat uh, that it has. So we're going to create a character. Um, the character that you pick in the beginning influences what your officers are in your crew. So you actually have to make, uh, if you want to play well, I guess, or if you want to exploit it, uh, you have to pick, make certain choices at the beginning. So we're actually going to start with a mage. Uh, and we're going to be lawful good so that we get a paladin as one of our other crew members so we get their, like, passive benefits. Um, we're going to be human because I believe this has the, like, demi-human hate that all the early D&D games have. And uh, we're going to name our character Berserker in honor of the Broken Land. Uh, so... This game doesn't let you modify your stats like you can in other games, and it doesn't let you do anything except re-roll. Um, the most important thing we're going to want is just uh, 18 intelligence for our mage. I have a bad habit of like just blowing past it because I'm hitting the button too quickly, so I'm going to try not to do that, but we'll see. I don't know about uh, most of the stuff in this game, like spells and things seem to work really strangely and not at all like in other D&D games. There we go, 18 intelligence. Oh, we got 17 charisma too. That's gonna be really useful. It isn't gonna be useful. All right, story. I'm gonna wait for this to scroll for a minute so I don't have weird pauses when I read this. Okay. Like most of the inhabitants of the Forgotten Realms, you had always thought of your world as unique, the only one of its kind. So it came as a great shock when you found out that you were not alone, that your world was but a tiny speck of sand in a giant sea of darkness, that there was such a wide diversity of alien races and planets teeming with life, that your world seemed dull and uninteresting in comparison. This knowledge came to you one evening in the form of a drunken captain in a quiet dockside tavern in Waterdeep. At first you smiled politely and shook your head in disbelief. You had heard tall tales from seafaring men before, but either this sailor was a madman or a liar of a magnitude you had never before encountered. What you found odd was that the other sailors around the table nodded their heads in approval of the tales and seemed as though they believed every word he was saying. Deciding to humor the grizzled old sea dog, you accepted his invitation to go back to his ship for another round of drinks. He claimed to have a bottle of rare elven wine, which he hadn't yet opened. Upon reaching the docks, your suspicions were confirmed when you saw a weather-beaten old galleon tied up at the pier. Even your practiced eye could discern no differences between it and the other galleons tied up nearby. 
The captain was as good as his word, and you had to admit that whatever else he lied about, he had told the truth about the wine. Shortly after the third glass, you felt a queasy sensation in your stomach. You were wondering if it was the wine when you felt the strange vibration in the planks under your feet. You put your hand to a beam in the wall and felt the same curious vibration. Looking over to the captain, you noticed that he had a sly sort of grin on his face, and he was watching you carefully. With a terrible sense of dread, you lurched up and stumbled over to the window and looked out. Below you, you could see the twinkling lights of Waterdeep visible through breaks in the puffy clouds. After a short trip to the moon and back, you were far less skeptical of the captain's stories and listened attentively to his tales of faraway places and the riches that awaited in the world beyond the azure skies of Toril. Towards the end of his tale, the captain seemed to grow uncomfortable, as if he were broaching a difficult subject. He explained to you that he was ill and that he had perhaps another year left to live. Another year left to live. He wanted to retire to Neverwinter, the place of his birth, and live out his remaining days with his few living relatives. He looked at you intently and said he wanted to sell his ship. When he asked you why he had didn't sell it to one of his other seafarers at the tavern, he made a face and said, "None of them dogs is fit to the life of a spell jammer. You lad, you have a spark in your eye. I noticed it the first time I set eyes on you. You'll go places, lad. I'm running behind." So, lad, we got a deal. Still overwhelmed by the giddy sensation of having flown to the moon, you answered without thought by clasping the old man's hand and nodding. By the end of the week, the old captain was off and you had picked out your crew. Master of your own ship and master of your destiny, you are prepared for a journey into the unknown. Oh, like a car commercial at the end there. <laughs> Too much text. Words. So, here we go. You hit play game. It asks you to uh, ask you to give the answer from the manual, which is obviously this word. I've got the manual right here, and then it just dumps you into space, right here, in the middle of like an asteroid field, I guess. So we'll start by by saving it. Uh, oh no, not that. So we get to we get to browse all my like weird janky DOS games. So you start in space and you start near the planet Toril. And the first thing you need to do in the game, which is super obvious, is actually not go to Toril, but it's to check your stats. I don't know who Justin is. Apparently he was the kind of kind person who contributed this version of Game Wizard to the internet. Uh, but so we check our stats. Because it turns out all of your crew's stats are randomized as well. And so you can end up with uh, prime stats that are like nine for some of these characters. Uh, most of them don't matter, but the first cleric, uh, I think, really matters because it determines whether or not, like, how much damage you can take before you stop moving in space. And so this isn't this isn't great. Uh, so we'll actually, we're actually going to quit the current game. And we're going to re-roll a new character and check that again. Uh, normally, you could check the stats through the game's menus and stuff, but uh, it's really slow and time-consuming. So, I just use a little utility to, to load that information into memory so I can read it all in one place. If we get a, if we get a very good um, role for our own character, or the rest of the characters are decent, um, we won't need to worry about that too much. Um, but we want to make sure that we've got at least like that. We don't want to <laughs> we don't want a nine on that person. So this is part of the part of the setup of starting this game. Because of the bugs in this game, it's also unbelievably difficult uh, in certain areas uh, or incredibly time consuming. Because you, whoops, passed an 18 there. Always do that. Uh, because you can, you can very easily back yourself into a corner where uh, because of the bugs in the game, like you can't dock at a port because you have negative tax and they'll confiscate all of your gold and cargo every time you dock. Uh, or you can get to a place where you're in space and basically adrift because you take a little bit of damage in combat and it's impossible to repair your ship. Uh, oh 
Man, it's giving me the worst rolls. I'm just going with the next one if this doesn't if this doesn't pan out. We'll just go with whatever this gives us. I have a theory that uh, in the end, the character stats aren't going to matter that much uh, because we basically just need to do one fight in the game. There's, I think, one fight you need to do. There might be a few, um, but there's one specific fight that you need to do, uh, I think, a boarding action uh, to complete. That's really good in everything, but in, I think I'll take it. All right. So let's see what we got. Oh, that's not bad. All all mediocre. So let's let's save this. Let's try to overwrite the game. So now, now that we know our party is kind of okay. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to have our crew members memorize their spells. The spells are also random, so you can you can end up just totally screwed. Um, the thing that we want to worry about early on is being able to output magic damage. Uh, we're definitely going to take mirror or uh, invisibility because it's berserker. Um, the biggest thing we want to be able to do is uh, put out magic damage if in case we have to do an undead mission because the undead missions, uh, if you get them early on, there's no way for you to damage the undead other than using like magic missile or uh, things like that because they're, they take damage only from magic weapons. And uh, so you can, get, you can get really, really screwed by that. Um, one of my test runs, I ran into a ship that was piloted by uh, mummies, vampires, and whites. Uh, almost exclusively so uh, just just one spell okay uh, so you can see it gives you the same party every time but their uh, their spells and uh, their spells and abilities are randomized um, clerics always get the same spells but uh, probably want dispel magic um, I actually don't know how well any of the spells work in this game other than the damage spells so far. Um, I'm hoping that, that invisibility is is suitably broken, uh, but I'm not holding out hope. <laughs> it seems like you're not able to get fireball in this game, uh, which is a real shame because fireball is the best spell. Well, delayed blast fireball, I guess. I'm just giving everybody magic missile because it's guaranteed damage output, um, and it'll uh, it'll help if we run into an undead ship or something like that. Uh, fortunately, there's no resting in the game. You don't have to you don't have to do any resting or any stuff in between battles. I guess it's assumed that you automatically rest when you're. Uh, I don't think knock is even used in this game. Uh, you'll notice she has like less spells for some reason, uh, but that's fine. That was what Lady Arena, I think. Yeah. No spells. Yeah. So these uh, these particular characters, uh, you get different different characters depending on your alignment and your class. Uh, you get a paladin and a ranger. If you start as a mage and you're good um, otherwise you just get regular fighters which are better early on but they they drop off very quickly in usefulness so let's save it after we've set that stuff up <laughs> all right so this is where the game gets a little bit odd <laughs> Pirates of Realm Space. We are a pirate. So we're going to dock at Waterdeep, and it's going to tell us we owe 806 tax. Uh, so th this 
this advertised that it used second edition rules, uh, Morricane, but it actually uses the gold box engine, which is built on first edition rules. So there's not enough detail in what's actually done in the game that I don't know which rules it's actually using. I think it's just using modified gold box first edition rules, um, but it's hard to tell. I don't think they had enough time to program a new rules system into it. Um, so there's that. <laughs> Um, also, if I remember correctly, the, uh, the original Spelljammer setting was, f was designed for not advanced Dungeons and Dragons or something like that. It's been a long time since I looked into it, but I think it was for, it was an extension of the Greyhawk world or something. I forget that entirely though. Um, so we have to go to the government building and pay our taxes. If you mess up on this screen and you enter something that isn't the exact amount of the taxes, like even if you try to overpay, they confiscate everything you're carrying, uh, all of your gold and all of your cargo. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the shipping depot and we're going to sell all of our cargo because trading in this game is completely broken. Um, it cuts the sell value of anything you have in half. So even if you find a... Uh, if you have, if you find another port that sells the same resource for twice the value, you're gonna break even. In fact, you're gonna do less than break even because you have to pay tax. You also have to pay more tax based on how much uh, tradable cargo you have. So it makes sense to just get rid of it all immediately, right from the start. So that done, we're gonna we're gonna pick up a mission now. The missions are randomized for I think the first 20 missions. And then you start getting missions from the governors. Once you get missions from the governors, then it progresses the story. But for the first part, you need to do a bunch of random missions just to level up. So you get experience just for piloting your ship and visiting other ports. Uh, but you also gain additional experience for completing missions, whether or not they involve combat. So we're going to go to Rick's Alehouse. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> He's about to sit down with a whole bottle of wine. He's been playing this game, I'm pretty sure. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to inquire about work. So, you have... You are approached by a wealthy merchant. He has been fortunate enough to be given the opportunity to buy a private collection of rare art objects from Saloon. In order to tender his bid on these items, he must get to Colliar as soon as possible. He is prepared to give you 1,500 gold pieces if you can get him there quickly. You'll be paid 1,500 gold pieces upon completion of this mission at Athenar on Collier. That guy's amazing. The like, the like, pedophile mustache, the mullet, the bottle of wine. <laughs> he doesn't look particularly stoked to pose for uh, a video game, a <laughs> video game appearance as well. <laughs> you can you can role play as that guy. We're bringing him on the ship uh, with us. Uh, so yes, we're going to accept this job for this merchant who wants to go bid on some rare art objects. So we're going to go to the shipping depot again, which I think this kind of looks like Tim Heidecker, but I'm not sure. It could also be like the the like unpleasant HR lady. Uh, so, so we're going to pick up cargo, or we're going to see if there's a job available for cargo. And there isn't. Just our luck. So there's nothing there. We can look at, uh, we can look at some of the amazing art for the, uh, for the rest of it. This guy in the tea jersey at the temple. He, uh, they can restore all your stuff. You'll notice level drain. Is a big thing that happens in this a lot. Uh, level drain persists if you die and restart the game from uh, a save, unless you like quit and load the save from the start. Uh, very, very good stuff. Um, this is the temple guy. Uh, we already saw the the council of lords, which was just some torches. Uh, there's the harbor master. He's uh, he looks a little stressed. We've got, we went to the alehouse. There's this guy in the weapons shop with some excellently drawn armor behind him. <laughs> this guy, 
This guy cracks me up. It's like stoner wizard. I love it. Ah, uh, we'll be visiting this guy a lot later because we're gonna need, uh, we're gonna need all of these magic items to uh, to do stuff with. Um, but we can't really afford to do any of that now because we're gonna need money to pay taxes. Uh, and there's Tim again, but this time he's behind bars. Uh, anyway, so we have a mission. Oh, we have to pay our crew. Don't forget you have to pay your crew every time you leave port. Uh, if you don't pay them exactly how much they a they ask, uh, the entire crew abandons you. And you're paying them one gold piece for as long as you're in space. So they kind of get shafted. Uh, all right. It automatically replenishes air anytime you dock, so you don't need to actually hit that button. I think it's completely pointless. Uh, we're going to leave orbit. We're going to go to navigate. And I believe they said Koliar. Uh, so we're going to set a course for Koliar. And we're going to spell jam to our destination. So this is the normal spell jamming speed. It decides to like adjust course a couple of times. And it usually dumps you out of hyper warp uh, where the planet was when you started. So you always have to like adjust and go like several times. So this is the this is the speed that normally you just kind of go, uh, and you'll notice like we're not go we're not going to the planet. So I'm gonna actually stop that, and we're gonna go to the planet manually, spell jam manually. All right, we're at Coli at Coliar. Uh, I actually forget which port he wanted us to go to. So before we dock, because we don't want to pay taxes twice, otherwise we would, we're going to look at our job, and he wants to go to Athenar. So we're going to go to Athenar. And so we have to pay 930 tax uh, on a job that makes us 1500 bucks. Uh, so we're going to do that first. Always pay your taxes first. Um, and you have to pay your taxes repeatedly every time you dock. Uh, there's no, like, cooldown or anything like that. Oh, right. We go to the co Congress building to collect our reward as well. Um, different planets have different taxes. Oh, right. Uh, Athenar is the home of the bird people, like this guy, um, who are not photographs of people in bird suits, unfortunately. Um, we've got the bird priest over here. We've got the bird bartender. They want that uh, that lizard man. He's wanted for 5,000, um, whatever that symbol is. We've got our storage bird person. We've got our supply shop bird person with a super long arm. And we've got the same guy who runs, I think, the supply shop. Or no, sorry. The same person who runs the cutting edge, the storage company, and the tavern. The same bird. Same bird. Uh, so we're going to get more work from the tavern. A huge blue hippo-like man approaches you with a large and irregularly shaped package. He needs this package delivered to Glyth. No questions asked. Larbo will ride along to assure delivery, and upon arrival, the person picking up the package will pay you 2,250 gold. You'll be paid 2,250 gold upon completion of this mission at Mingabwe on Glyth. So we'll take that. It's a little far out to Glyth, um, but we have a solution to that so we don't have to wait through abysmally long spell jamming times. Uh, so then we're also going to go to the thing. We're going to find out what they want. They want us to take medium shield to Waterdeep for a thousand gold and we're not going to do that because we're not going to water deep right now basically you only want to stack up the missions and the uh supplies that are going to like the same planet otherwise you pay tax twice and like 900 gold for tax here on a thousand dollar delivery wouldn't make a lot of sense we pay our crew we're going to navigate to outer planets glyth 
And so we're going to spell jam to glyph. It'll take about nine days. And so we don't want to wait that long uh, to get to glyph. So we're just going to speed up the game. Oh, asteroid field. That's fine. Oh, we, took, we got hit. We got hit by space debris. Okay, we're through the asteroid field. And then mashing the spell jam button a couple of times will uh, we'll save you time as well. So here we are. We can slow things down again. All right, so we've already... Uh, we're going to dock at Mingabwe. They have uh, lesser taxes, so we don't have to worry about that too much. That's nice. Um, and then we can go to the Council of Elders. This guy, he's an elder, uh, and we'll pay our taxes, collect our reward, and then let's check out who's here. Village Healer. <laughs> the, uh, the Tavern. Oh. Speaking of tavern, I'm drinking this fairly good, extremely cheap German beer. I guess it's an Edel special beer. All right, uh, so we want to inquire about work here. As always, uh, you are approached by a small man dressed in fine silk garments. He is flanked on either side by a pair of heavily armored ogres, and he looks haughtily at you while playing with a jeweled pendant around his neck. Reaching to his belt, he pulls out a bag and pours some sparkling gemstones into his hand. He says that he has a package waiting at Anadia that he needs to have moved to Mingabwe. Mingwanabi. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you will take the job, you will be well paid. If you don't take it, he looks suggestively at the four ogres who smile at you with toothy grins. You will be paid 5,700 gold pieces upon completion of this mission at Mingabwe on Glyth. And so that's a two, two station job. So we'll uh, we'll accept that. That's actually a decent amount. We're getting paid basically 20, 2700 or something each way. Uh, so we'll check the storehouse. We'll see if we can pick up cargo. But this one's going to uh, Olive Garden's den. Uh, we're not going to go there because uh, that's super far away and in the wrong direction. Um, there's no shipyard here, so we're not going to be able to uh, repair our ship from those asteroids. Uh, but we can see the uh, the various guys. This guy in a red karate gi with a sword running the, uh, the weapon store. And uh, that shady looking dude. So we'll exit Mingabwe. Crew, crew is demanding more money already somehow um, but that's fine we're going to go to inner planets I believe it said Collier or did it say Anadia I think it said Anadia let's double check don't want to waste the trip yeah so we're going to go to Anadia and we're going to spell jam to destination real quick Oh, there's an encounter. So early in the game, you can't deal with any of the encounters. Uh, so you just drive in a straight line. Uh, no one can catch up to your ship, and then you spell jam out when you're uh, when you're just a little bit away. All right, here we are at Umbergard. We're actually getting a great tour of the uh, of the solar system here. During this, uh, during this first couple of missions, they're sending us all over the place. So here we go. Umbergard, 520 gold. You are given a package to deliver. <laughs> yeah, the boarding combat is actually something that I want to dig into um, probably after I complete just this mission. Um, it's good that we're seeing the kind of different art styles that are used. You can see they kind of like... They liked the gradient tool a lot uh, in this. It's very, it's it's a weird art style to come out of SSI uh, with their publishing standards at this time, because um, this was, I think, 1992. Um, we will get to the combat. The combat is a little strange because once you get into combat, uh, you have to finish it. There's no way out of combat without just killing the emulator. Uh, so 
There's this guy. Again, all of the tavern keepers seem to like that whole bottle of wine. <laughs> it is very much a space mailman game. <laughs> mm. At least until you get magic weapons and power up a little bit from leveling up by making deliveries. Then you have... Uh, so we don't want to cancel our current job. Um, once you've gotten... Because you keep getting... Uh, <laughs> the temple. I think they're halflings here. They're like... Um, they're, they're a race of, of strange halflings here. Uh, but yeah, once you when you go to an area, uh, you gain a little bit of experience for everyone in your in your group, I think. Although your officers might not level up. Uh, but getting the... Ah, here we go. Oh, I guess we can't repair at this shipyard. We can repair at this dry dock. Repair that stuff. And then later on, you can kind of modify your ship. You can add all of this extra stuff to it. Um, you can uh, you can do quite a lot of stuff. There's a lot of ships you can you can obtain. Um, you can actually take over ships by boarding them and and uh, killing their crews. Although that's a really difficult proposition early on. We might be able to do it though. We've got a crew full of clerics and mages, uh, so we might have an advantage. Uh, but we need to go to the government hall. We need to pay our taxes. We can't earn a reward yet. Our crew is our crew is demanding more and more money every time. Uh, so outer planets. We need to go back to Glyth. We're gonna spell jam there quickly. Oops, that's that's firing. Let's see. Let's see if we can f find. They were off the starboard. Yeah, let's let's save it. Why not? Right? Let's uh, let's save it. Let's see if we can get in some trouble. Because if we load the game here, we can probably uh, we'll probably recover it and get out of combat without taking any damage or anything like that. Um, so we just need to get we need to get in range and then grapple this ship. Depending on what kind of ship it is, we're gonna see uh, some kind of of uh, cool stuff. This looks like it might be a dwarven ship, a hammerhead maybe. Uh, the weapons kind of fire out at like a random angle. Oh, we took some damage. All right, we grappled. So here's our, here's our, uh, here's our combat. Um, now, one of these things, view, there we go. So we can take a look at this layout. You can only move the cursor so far away from the character who starts the looking. Uh, so it looks like we're up against some gnomes. A uh, whole lot of gnomes. So we just boarded a gnome ship. Uh, now the most important thing is going to be we want to find something like this. There's a line of gnomes all lined up together. So we're gonna want to make we're gonna want to make room for our mages to get in there and use their lightning bolt spells. Your your crewmen automatically start on uh, quick mode, but you can turn that off. Uh, let's bring this guy over here and let's cast lightning bolt on this first gnome. So we get that cool effect, uh, and we kill off most of those gnomes. Uh, having this many magic users in your party, because you have so many crew that are already fighters, uh, means playing the game with anything but a magic user is just uh, futile. So the next thing we're going to do... Ah, oh, our cleric took damage. That's, that's unfortunate. Uh, but we want to get our cleric in here too. 
attack some of these guys. Oh no, Berserker is injured. Can't cast a spell after taking damage. Uh, but we can at least organize our people here. And so, uh, Madam Mona still has magic left. So, all right, this is what we wanted. Oh, gnomes are unaffected by hold person. That's unfortunate. Uh, Berserker took damage, so we want to get Berserker kind of out of there. Two of the gnome are killed. So yeah, each of the gnomes here is a unit representing three to five uh, on this screen. Three to five enemies individually. Um, so what we might want to do is hopefully this casts in the same pattern as, uh, as the gold box. Oh, no, it's a different pattern. Uh, but if we're lucky it will make it so that we can instantly kill all of these gnomes uh, because they'll be stunned and they'll be it'll be the coup de gras attack basically every time uh, so that's something that we want to happen and then we want to oh no i did it at the wrong place i might have lost that spell that would be really unfortunate just want to move this guy over here. So they'll have a harder time getting to him. Also, uh, AI can shoot through walls with bows. It's impossible to even use the bow if you have the crewmen, uh, if you have the crewmen selected for, for manual uh, use. Oh yes, we got a hold person on that one gnome. Why does Jasmine Blossom have no spells? That's probably some kind of bug. Oh, no, wait, we can... Oh, damn it. We want to use Stinking Cloud on these gnomes as well. This guy can just walk right through, I guess. Yeah, we're wrecking these gnomes. This is going to be sh shortcut to riches if we get this. Yeah. Oh, they're just... They're just killing the shit out of these gnomes. Good job, crew. Oh, dead... Gnome is incapacitated and then instantly killed. So I think it makes you finish out your turn entirely. Yeah. So then you get to the end and it gives you options like flee or heal and loot. So I don't know why you would flee if you've already won the battle. But uh, so we're going to heal. It just says aid is rendered unto all your crew. That's all it takes. No, no complicated memorizing spells or resting or anything. Just instant heal. Uh, so that's a nice concession. So we're going to loot their ship. You have a galleon. They have a tradesman. Take theirs. So you can take their ship. I actually don't know which ship is better right now. So we're actually not going to take it. Because I think we damaged their ship more than our ship got damaged. Uh, you have a minor helm. They have a minor helm. So we're not going to swap that either. Uh, we can take their weapons, and we can take all of this, uh, all of this stuff that they were carrying. So we've got nine or three tons of lead, three tons of canvas, 
Three tons of spruce and one ton of silk. We'll take all of that. We get 3,000 gold. And a smoke powder. And leather armor. So, fortunately their ship is, like, missing from combat. So, I don't think we need to worry about getting rid of it uh, to continue. But uh, we're going to head to Glyth again. We should be there in about nine days. One day. There we go. Less than an hour. Here we go. Back to Glyth. All right. I'm going to dock at Ming Wannabe. We're going to go to the Council of Elders and claim our reward for a job well done. Pay our taxes. Uh, talk to the tavern. Actually, we should probably... Uh, we should probably have saved it before coming here, but that's fine. Uh, a nobleman in Inadia is on poor terms with an ex-business partner on Garden. He wishes for you to pick up a case of expensive elven wine from Inadia and deliver it to the Garden as a gesture of goodwill in the hopes that this will help to settle things between them. You will be paid 5,300 GP upon completion of this mission at Clive's Den on Garden. That's not a bad mission. Um, if we get a combat mission, we're kind of screwed because it means that we won't be able to uh, we won't be able to accept the mission. So we have to go pay taxes somewhere else uh, in order to uh, in order to to get a new mission. So we did very well in that combat. So let's let's save this again got to go back to Anadia, which we've been to a bunch of times, and I can't seem to stop on. There we go. All right. Space Mailman. Hmm. This seems like it might be bugged. Let's not go there. Our navigator is not having a very good time here. Destination, Anadia. Spell jam to destination. There we go. So the dock at Umbergard. We're paying more and more tax because uh, we're actually carrying cargo around now. So we're going to want to get rid of that. Let's get rid of our cargo. Uh, so we can just sell all this cargo. Wow, silk! 48,000 gold! I think we might have just solved our gold problem uh, by killing all those gnomes. Um, so that's good. <laughs> we'll repair our ship. None of the none of the armament is damaged. Wow, let's turn the speed back now to normal. Uh, we can't save when we're docked. Uh, we can't go to the pub. We can check the warehouse to pick up cargo. But it's not going where we're going, so we're not going to take it. Um, let's see. Do they have magical weapons here? Uh, they do not. They do have a bunch of stuff that I'm pretty sure is uh, completely useless. Uh, like helms, boots, uh, belaying pins and gaffing hooks. I don't think those are even weapons. Uh, they're just there for flavor, and you can spend money on them. Uh, short sword plus one, we might want to get uh, one of those. Yeah, let's get one of those. Uh, we're gonna start collecting. Actually, let's let's see if let's see if the uh, the cloak actually uh... Oh, excellent. Yeah, I think we need three of those. So let's see if the cloak actually uh, improves our armor class, or class 7. Uh, so we're going to unready that, and we're going to ready this cloak plus 2. Armor class 5, so it does work. Excellent. Uh, we're going to trade... No, let's trade give. We're going to give this to our thief. 
We're going to give a short sword to our paladin. We're going to give two short swords to our paladin, I guess. <laughs> That's how that works. Um, split. Uh, this is the first... Whoa, oh, wait, what? <laughs> Hold on now. <laughs> Hold on. Did... Oh, did we just find something great? Two short swords equipped. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I wonder how oh, that can't possibly work in combat, though. There's no way. There's no way that'll possibly work. Uh, we'll try that later. I'll probably try that off stream. Uh, whether equipping multiple weapons gives fighters multiple attacks with each weapon. Uh, spear. You don't want to use a spear. You want to use this short sword plus one. Uh, okay. That's decent. Um, we do need one more. One more uh, short sword plus one. Yeah, so what we're going to do is actually, uh, we while we while we could retire with this 80,000 gold we got, we're going to stock up on magical items because we're going to end up fighting a lot of uh we're going to we're going to end up fighting a lot of only damaged by magic enemies uh which is going to be a real pain in the ass. So we want everyone to have at least a plus 1 weapon. Um and eventually, plus more than that. Um, we're also going to need to upgrade our ship. And the ship upgrade stuff is is like 20,000 gold to rebuild the hull. Or uh, 120, 120 gold to add netting. Or extra rigging is 4,000. And so those, those modifications stack up really quickly. So you need a couple hundred thousand gold make that work uh, but you can get 20 30 thousand gold for each uh, destruction mission that you take on I'm just gonna leave orbit let's save the game again uh, this game's particularly uh... yeah yeah that's that's right on uh, Murricane is to, to find a good ship uh, that someone else is piloting and uh, use it. It's great that they they let you view these like really high detail like th 3D renders, I guess, of these ships uh, that just spin around a little bit here. Um, it's a really really cool use of the art assets, and this is obviously where like ninety nine percent of their art budget went is into these ships. Which I guess. If you're making a game about space combat, making good ships is a good start, good place to put your your art uh, assets. Um, but yeah, the one other thing that sucks is that even if we get a ton of uh, a ton of gold, we'll still have to go to uh, we'll still have to go to a bunch of different places. We'll have to engage in a lot of combat and do missions in order to level up. Uh, unless that becomes incredibly uh, tedious and time-consuming, in which case I'll just edit the character's experience. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we want this. What is it? Is it another galleon? Another one of us? Oh, they're hailing us. Oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, what's, uh, what's the button to hail? Hail? Let's talk. <laughs> Farewell, I have nothing to say. Let's trade. Yes, let's trade. We have no cargo to sell here. You have no cargo, Captain. Okay. Uh, cool. Well, failing that... Oh, ship badly damaged. <laughs> All right. Uh, so what do we have? Elves. We're fighting elves. Oh, 
this is not, this like weird sinusoidal pattern is not great for what we want to do to the elves. Uh, let's see, those were all their officers too. Let's see. Oh no! Is this, this is, oh right, right, I forgot. So Jasmine Blossom doesn't have any spells because Jasmine Blossom is the is the helmsman. So they're the person who's draining their magic in order to run the ship and make the ship work. Uh, so we're gonna I'm gonna just park Jasmine Blossom over here. Oh, no, don't shoot my mages. My mages need to survive in order to uh, annihilate you. Here? This should be... Oh, no, it doesn't... You have to do study every time. Oh, that's not good. We're going to have to rely on our, our other... Uh... Oh, no, we're just going to... We're going to we're gonna rely on reloading the game because uh, once one of your characters dies, uh, it has incredible penalties for uh, resurrecting them which is really unfortunate. So I have to remember to, yeah, I have to remember to study every time I finish a combat because it doesn't automatically restock your spells. It doesn't remember what spells you stock. You have to specify every time. Uh, but we just wanna, I'm gonna finish this combat as quickly as possible or maybe just, uh, maybe we wanna just kill the emulator. Let's, let's kill the emulator. That'll be a lot faster. And then, did it load back? Yes, it did. Reload our cheat software. Let's start this back up and put it in the correct place. <laughs> but yeah, using... Using a, a utility. Okay, this is where it gets weird. So we, we closed the emulator and it put us back where we were in space when we just hit play game. But we have to then double check to make sure that none of our characters are dead because <laughs> that stuff can stick around. Like if you, if you finish a combat and you're like, oh no, and you like quit or if you die in combat, it'll carry over it'll put you back where you were but it'll carry over all of the stuff that all the all the uh all of the uh like negative negative statistics and stuff that happened during combat so you you can carry over that kind of stuff that's not what i want i want i want to load this game okay there we are now we have to go through and assign all of our spells again. So more magic missiles. I think sleep won't work on any of the enemies that we ever face in this game. Uh, so that's going to be a spell we never use. Uh, it's usually useful, like in uh, in gold box games early early on. Any Dungeons and Dragons games, like best early game spell, but. Uh, it's practically useless here because everything's level five or higher. So she's gonna lose these spells, but I'm still gonna do it just in case. Yeah, stinking stinking cloud is the is the MVP. Stinking Cloud. Lightning Bolt is really good. Um, the only drawback of Stinking Cloud... I'm actually going to switch these people over to Double Stinking Cloud. Uh, the only drawback to uh, to Stinking Cloud is it does not work on Undead at all. Um, so, yeah, I wish I had Fireball. Uh, but there's... There, like, I've never seen a character get Fireball at the start of the game. I think they might not have programmed it. I think they did program Ice Storm, though. Um, and part of that might be that it's... 
there might be a lore version of that, which is like casting fireball on one of the ships causes you to like burn up the air in the ship and foul it so like everybody dies. Uh, which is kind of, I mean, it's interesting, I guess, but it's also like kind of dumb that that's a thing. Yeah, yeah, or it could burn the ship. But, uh, I should. No, I don't want to trade gold. I want to give this to my thief, who may or may not be wearing armor at all. Oh, they've got leather, leather armor. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, I don't think you actually need a thief for anything uh, in this game. Yeah, we want stream five. Why not? I think I can create an, un an effectively unlimited number of files here. Uh, let's make sure our job is active. Yep, we need to go to Olive Garden. So we're going to go to Garden, Spell Jam, and we're going to go fast. Oh, yes! This is an excellent test right here. Uh, so what we've got here is we've got a, uh, and I believe this is an Illithid ship. The Mind Flayers uh, with their Nautilus ship that's pictured on the cover art for this. Uh, and also, strangely, one of the Harbor Masters uh, in one of the cities that I may not have visited yet, uh, he has a picture of the Nautilus uh, on the wall in his office, which I find very strange. Because the, the Illithids are like horror monsters, Mind Flayers. Like, why would you have a picture of their ship on your wall? That's, like, kind of creepy, dude. <laughs> uh, they also have, like, rear-mounted weapons, it looks like. Oh, look at that! Oh, we hit their stuff. All right, what do we got? What do we got? What kind of crew do they have? A halfling, a gnome, an illithid, a halfling, a gnome. Well, those guys are going to be easy to wreck. But, uh, if I'm not mistaken, oh, it's too far away. This is going to be tough. Okay, so we need to get to that illithid and kill it as fast as possible. So, let's try Lightning Bolt. Yes! No! Wait, what? What just happened? Okay, Berserker's still alive. Why did a bunch of halflings die and a human? What? I don't understand anything about what's going on in this log. Okay, let's, we'll roll with it. Uh, you're a thief, you can just stay the hell out of Oh, there's more. There's more. No, this is bad. There's a lot of mind flayers. Look at these guys. Okay. So we're going to use hold person. Oh, I can't hit any of them. We're going to use hold person on all of these. Uh, on all of these uh, gnomes and halflings and stuff. Because uh, they're kind of they're kind of not a threat, uh, but those mind flayers are a huge threat. Three moves left. Uh, also, the wait command does not work at all. Pressing the button doesn't do anything. Clicking on it does nothing. Uh, so that's broken. Um, just end that turn. some halflings I don't know what's going on with our crew also they might be like stunned or something oh, it's all close quarters too this is gonna be this is gonna be tough all right yeah she doesn't have any spells because why did I lose Gnome 
is held. One of the gnome are killed. Okay. Cast lightning bolts. Oh no, they're immune to magic. That's not good. Uh, what magic are they immune to, though? Is it just magic resistance? Because we killed some of them before, somehow. Uh, we'll have to figure this out. Probably don't want our mage right in that corridor too, but we'll we'll deal with that later. I think our whole crew is uh, is feared too, so that's going to be uh, problematic. Oh, can't cast spells after taking damage. Let's get rid of these gnomes before they wake up. Let's see if these guys. Like magic. Oh no, they're out of range of magic missile. That's no good. Uh, I can't move him there. Oh, the illithid's doing mind blast. That's not good. Alright. Uh, so Berserker is awake again. Casts a invisibility. Actually, let's see if we can control our crew manually and have them attack these thralls or whatever they are. One of the gnome are killed. Yeah, how do we uh, use view them? Yeah, once we once we like take them over, we can't use their ranged attack, which is a, a big problem. All backstabbed for one damage. Uh, what, what's going on? Can they be magic missiled? Not affected. They appear to be completely immune to magic, which is unfortunate. Uh, but they're not immune to being backstabbed. So there's that. Oh, this is lovely. Uh, when your guy's invisible, he's invisible to you, too. <laughs> you can't see them on the map. Uh, that's a thing. Uh, oh, crap. I moved that guy too far. New round. Backstab the illithid. Bonk those halflings. We need this guy to move out of the way. Uh, also, all of my magic users are female. Uh, I'd like to point out that they have this, this excellent sprite for the female magic user. We need, we need all hands on deck to have our fighters, <laughs> lady beards. <laughs> uh, we need all of our fighters to get on these, uh, get on these mind flayers as quickly as possible. Uh, the mind flayers do not seem to have most of their regular attacks that they're supposed to have, and they're just kind of magic resistant. 
uh, jerks right now. So, which is good because it means they're a lot easier to beat, um, but they are entirely magic resistant. So uh, that's gonna be a problem. One of Crew Zero's squad goes down. That's okay, we can lose one crew member. Let's kill this gnome off. <laughs> Excellent screams. All right, so can we? Oh, that would hit our own dudes. Yeah, that's all gonna hit our own stuff. Um, but we do want to get our get our crew in on the fight with the elithids as quickly as possible because they'll be hitting f five times or whatever uh, so crew versus uh, crew versus officers the crew like always wins unless you have magic oh, two of the halflings are killed I think we can I think we can do this I think we can I think we can win this And the other thing I plan on doing is once the uh, once the guys out here are dead, I'm gonna stuff that stuff that corridor full of uh, I'm gonna stuff that corridor full of our uh, our crew, and then turn them on quick mode so that we can uh, so that we can have them use their uh, bows and arrows, which they will do as soon as they're. Uh, as soon as they're given the opportunity to. One human is killed. <laughs> what? What human? <laughs> oh, the Elithid is killed. Yes. Oh, we're messing these halflings up. One human is injured. <laughs> is that like, is it a default thing? When it's like... I think that's a thing that happens when uh, when you cast spells and kill people. It says a human is killed for some reason. Right, we need to try to get these dudes out of here. Oh, gnome is incapacitated and they still missed. Too close to attack with missile weapon. Oh, does that mean... Yeah, one of the gnome are killed. There's no, uh, there's no coup de gras mechanic in this. It's just that when they're incapacitated, it's much higher chance to hit. Um, so they changed that, that around from the, uh... I think that one mage is getting constantly... Uh, stunned and can't move out of the corridor, which would be really, really unfortunate. Because uh, I don't think there's, I don't think I have a way to avoid that happening. Yeah. Uh, let's put this guy on quick and see, see what he does. It's time to put the crew on quick mode and see if they... Yeah, they use these missile weapons that you can't access any other way. Uh, which is strange, but I'll take it. Yeah, we can't... He runs over next to the next to the mind flayer and shoots at the halflings. Uh, but that's fine. We just need to get these halflings out of the picture, and they'll start they'll start doing the good stuff. Might as well just 
just to have these guys attack. Okay. Yeah, you're useless now. You're pretty much useless. Oh, this combat. Julia Valador. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it's, they're doing Mind Blast and it's doing nothing other than stunning people. Oh, yes! Yes, we got it. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna st stuff this corridor full of our full of our crew and hope that they shoot at the illithids. Getting that one dude out of the out of the way is going to be the tough thing. Okay. Here we go. Let's get him out of the way. And then get these dudes in here. Oh, I wish... Oh, wait! is working now for some reason. It wasn't before, but it is now. Okay. Get in there, dude. Get out of the way. Yes. Oh, we're going to need to unquick that guy. I get so, like, I get so confused in this combat. Um, no. Yes. Wait. I can't wait. Guard. It's so confused over, like, what, what turn it is and whose movement it is. Okay. I'm gonna get that one guy out of there. And just have our officers be on that one. What? Yes, make them under my control. Okay. Get in the hallway. We need to make sure they don't have a way out so they will actually attack. Uh, otherwise, they won't attack. There's like one dude stuck in a corner somewhere. Oh, you can't change the can't change the computer control of a character unless you can see them. Okay. You two can go under computer control because we've got a guy in the way. Wait, did I? Yeah, okay. He's under computer control. Yeah, look at this. There we go. 12 damage. They do so well at that. Uh, okay. Yeah, you get out of there. And we're 
just gonna use these mages as like command and control because uh, we want all these guys under computer control so they can use weapons we don't have access to uh, but we have to keep that one guy on the end uh, so that they don't run away oh, maybe we can block them in entirely Items. Here we go. I'm not ready another weapon. Oh, with a small shield. Okay. What? Uh, <laughs> arrows are a separate weapon. Uh, okay, there we go. Yeah, so now our crew... We're just going to put these mages on computer control. So I don't have to keep running their turns. Oh, we got one. We got one. Oh, right. I was going to block these guys in. Uh, you need to guard one more turn. And then when that guy guards... Now we can quick this guy. Guy's almost dead. Uh, can we unquick that guy from here? No. Need to wait until one of these mages gets up there. This is fascinating combat, uh, which is one of the excellent points of this game. I also noticed that uh, my crew is no longer doing ranged attacks, so they might have run out of arrows, uh, but I think they get regenerated every combat. So we're just going to wait for that. Oh, the front guy can't attack because he's stunned. Thanks to uh, initiative, I guess. It goes in a random order, so I can't, like, predict when it's going to come up with that front guy. Yeah, unable to attack. A stalemate right here. He's blocking the hallway. I should have moved him into the room. I bet their saving throws are super low, too. So we don't get to see, uh, we won't see them resist it very much. Maybe we can move our, oh no, we don't have enough range. We can't get our, uh, we can't get our ranger in there. We might be able to. Uh, we might be able to unquick this guy, <clears throat> and then he'll be able to open the door and walk around. Yes, excellent. I wonder why she didn't have her weapon equipped. All right, all right. This is all we need to do is get these guys in here. And then we'll be able to make them go quick. <laughs> oh, they're dead. This, this crew of four is dead. Somehow. <laughs> it's very excellent game. You can also run your ship with no crew, which is a little strange. Alright. So we're going to move these guys in here. We're just going to start bashing on these mind flayers. 
Oh, they're stunned. Fortunately, I think we have uh, more... Oh, you have no ammunition. That's why they stopped attacking. But, uh... Oh, these dead guys. Their weapon is arrows. I hit attack and it said they swung and missed. I don't know what's going on with those dudes. Uh... I knew what's going on here is we're going to get our actual team in here and get them doing some damage. Alright. Cleric out of the way. This is fine. Uh, we might be able to fix that guy by... What are they attacking? Are they attacking themselves? That's very strange. Uh, when I tell those guys to attack, it says that they swing and miss. And like not what they're attacking. Okay, they're under computer control. So now they'll go in and attack, even though I was unable to attack with them. Uh, these dead guys. We'll just make them they're they're cannon fodder, basically. Alright. We've got it as as thick as we can in here. Uh, oh, bless only affects one person now. Uh, and it might not have even affected anyone. Okay, so we can... want to make everybody under computer control that we can see. Uh, because then we can just let the game play itself, basically. Uh, the mages are going to move in and do something, probably? Who knows? But all of the areas that they could possibly try to do stuff are blocked off now, so... Um, They'll probably just wander around and do nothing. All right, is everyone under computer control? Oh, he just decided to run away. Uh, did they just cast Stinking Cloud? Okay, we got one of them. We got one. Awesome. This is what we want. Because we're just gonna let it do its thing. And eventually they'll die. Because they have no abilities, because this game is buggy as shit. Alright. And this should give us a ton of experience. These guys are worth a lot of experience. Um. got two left and these guys are back to using missile weapons that non-existent missile weapons oh lovely my crew's wandering off and like plundering the ship that's all of them excellent we defeated the evil illithid mind flayer threat uh, with very few casualties surprisingly all right, what do we got? You have a galleon, they have a nautiloid. I will take theirs. You have a series helm, they have a minor helm. I think we want to keep the series helm, but I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna check that real quick because 
because I don't know what the difference is. And I think somewhere, somewhere here I had the, uh, the manual. So I have a physical copy of the manual somewhere, but I haven't, uh, I haven't found it. So. Let's see here. Let's find this manual so that we can see what type of helm we want. Because one of the one of the helms actually like kills the person using it, so you can get like you can recruit uh, you can recruit useless fighters and. Uh, And then uh, they uh, <clears throat> they get killed. Series helms. Series helms primarily used primarily by mine players are a group of helms linked together to form a series. They tend to be less powerful than regular helms. We don't want a life jammer, uh, but I think we do want to take the minor helm. Replace your series helm with the minor helm. Yes. Take all their stuff. Oh, we got one pounds of satin, <laughs> which is weird that they use like a decimal, but then change the measuring. Yeah, you know what? It's fine. And we found 22,000 gold. Halberd, an axe hand. Ah, uh, two axe hands. Oh, your crew will use this air very quickly. Ah, uh, that's not good. Uh, we don't want our crew to, like, suffocate. But we do want to save it, because that's a major victory. All right. Um, and then I need to check something over here. Right, outer planets. I think we were on our way to Olive Garden. Yes. So. All right. We saved it. Oh, before I forget, I need to, uh, I need to give everyone their spells back because you have to do that after every encounter. All right, spells. Uh, invisibility unfortunately wore off when attacking, uh, so that wasn't very good. To use, um, although we will take Stinking Cloud and Melf's Acid Arrow. Stinking Cloud is good, but it's so like takes up so much space that we might need something else uh, occasionally. Erica Raven Hair. Uh, study. We don't give a shit about Spiritual Hammer. We need more hold persons, because hold person, instead of affecting the like four people that it should, seems to only affect one unit stack. Uh, so that's a little unfortunate. Uh, I think I just gave spells to the person who is going to lose them, but that's okay. What? <laughs> Oh my god! 251 copies of Burning Hands! <laughs> what happened? This is absolutely amazing! <laughs> so we're gonna keep that. Uh, we need to... Uh, we're just gonna leave that there. Instead, we're gonna study Lightning Bolt. And she's got 255 spells she can cast. Ah, oh, that's great. That's great. We are going to use that and we're going to abuse that so well. Uh, I can't wait until all of my mages get whatever bug that is. Because uh, that's great. That is fantastic. <laughs> 251 copies of Burning Hands. Uh She's got spells. Oh, 
I'm so excited about that. I gotta figure out how that happens. I think it was because I had them, like, on quick mode and they got mind blasted a number of times and it, like, overflowed into their spell slots or something. Because it's the first spell in the list. So it was definitely a memory overflow from somewhere um, that gave us that. Um, but that's that's just excellent. If we can transfer those to magic missiles, then we have like unlimited magical artillery uh, for whenever we need it. Um, that is fantastic. Uh, so Eva Dulac. Okay, uh, no, no one else has spells. We're gonna exit. We're gonna actually save it again because I absolutely uh, don't know whether that was present in our previous save. So uh, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna leave this on regular speed for a minute so I can savor this beer. 251 spells. Oh, if we could get that for lightning bolt or for like hold person. It'd be unstoppable. Plus, we've got a nautiloid now. Oh, we can look at the nautiloid. Let's look at it. Let's look at this thing. Look at that. It's, it's a design. All the like, all the weird art design for the ships and everything in Spelljammer are so cool. Like, you can see that there's like these oars on the side. They have like oars sticking out of the side that are like these fins on the Nautilus. Ah, oh, so cool. Plus it's got a piercing ram uh, and fouled air, unfortunately. Um, we need more crew too. We're gonna have to stop by the tavern when we get to Clive's Den. Uh, it only has 20 cargo capacity, but I think this one's actually like a, a really good ship. Uh, I remember this being a good ship. Right. We're actually making progress. Uh, pretty good progress. Four crew gain a level. Wow. Berserker, you gain a level. <laughs> yes. Oh, replenish that air. Oh, it's fresh air now. Three months and two days. Ah, so Berserker gained a level. Uh, level six mage. We get an additional level three spell. Uh, and it looks like we got Blink. We, it, add, it randomly picked a spell to add to our list. Because uh, I don't remember seeing Blink there before. So. This is, this is going to be excellent. We'll get two casts of Lightning Bolt for now. But uh, with uh, that one other mage who got... Uh, that one other mage who got, like... 251 casts of uh, <laughs> 251 casts of burning hands. Uh, brilliant. All right, all right. Uh, we need to exit this. We need to uh, leave orbit. Save the game now that we've. And yes, I am saving quite a lot just because this game's kind of uh, it's kind of unstable. So. Who knows what might happen uh, when we do things like dock or whatever. Um, notice that we have an 850 gold piece cargo tax, which means that we're probably going to have uh, really good... Uh, we're going to have really good cargo, whatever that silk or something that we got. is probably worth quite a bit. Okay, so we're here. We needed to deliver something. Also... <laughs> The quality, the quality of the art on this screen is not great, but I love the, the concept of it. That it's like these trees growing out of an asteroid and there's like a little medieval town like stuffed up under the tree. It's kind of like the Icewind Dale, Icewind Dale? Icewind Dale 1, like tree in the, in the wilderness thing where the town is built inside the tree. Um, but it's on an asteroid and it's, well, it's weird anyway. We're going to go pay our taxes. 1,400 gold worth of taxes. We're going to collect our reward. This guy, he's super cool. I bet this guy was probably stoked about playing this role where he's like, 
oh, I get to like put my feet up and be a badass pirate guy and wear like a high neck ruff and a leather vest. He's wearing a jerkin. But uh, let's see here. Um, Orin's borrowed goods. Orin with what is probably supposed to be a knife, but it's like bent at the end. So maybe it's rubber. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, we're going to sell all this stuff. Oh, satin is only worth four. <laughs> I guess because we only have two pounds of it. Uh, but then if we go to buy it, it's worth 40,000. Because <laughs> I guess that's a full ton. Uh, I'm not going to do the math on that. But uh, let's see. Bill's battered weapons. Bill's got a really long, long hand there. Uh, what can we buy? Do you have any magic weapons? A cutlass plus two. Uh, probably not worth it right now because we're gonna we're gonna hold out for long swords, which are like oh magic magic armor. Oh, we want that. Was that leather armor plus one? Yeah, we've got a hundred thousand gold now, uh, which is gonna be great. Uh, leather armor plus one. And then we could get plate mail for some of our dudes, uh, but I don't think we need to worry about that just yet. Um, Aldo's supplies. I, I love these photographs. This is like the earliest one of the one of the earliest like uses of a of this like still photograph thing. I think people were doing it maybe like a few years earlier. Um, but it was weird to see this coming out of a uh, coming out of a major publisher like SSI was at the time. Okay, we've done that. There isn't a shipyard here, which is unfortunate. Um, let's see if we can uh, view our items. Oh, we got a halberd. I guess we want to just sell that. Um, we're going to give that leather armor to our thief. And then let's see if we can uh, go to the armory and sell. I guess we don't need this brown cloak. Uh, and then go to the weapon shop and we can sell. Uh, I don't even know what smoke powder does. It might be like a hand grenade. It might be really good, but I don't know. I'm afraid to use it in combat because like, who knows? It could be bad. Uh, right. So we're going to go to the blind parrot. This guy, this guy with his empty stein and his like pirate bandana and hospital gown. Mm. So good. Uh, all right. A group of merchants wish to travel to Glyth in order to arrange a trade agreement with the officials of that port. They would be willing to pay you 4,800 gold pieces if you can grant them safe passage to their destination. You will be paid 4,800 gold pieces upon completion of this mission at Mingabwe on Glyth. That is a, a one-way trip for 4,800. That's pretty good. We can listen for rumors. I'm pretty sure that that uh, always says uh, nothing of interest. No offers. So we're going to need more crew eventually uh, to man our ship. But we should be fine for now. We're only slightly under crewed. 48 gold for crew. All right. We have enough air for three months. We're going to save the game again. Uh, although I'll just use the the same number eight. Actually, no. I'll just, I'll just keep going because who knows what happens if maybe you overwrite your save. It could... It could corrupt things. Uh, we're going to go super fast. Straight into the sun. We're going to skip this encounter, actually, I think. Because <laughs> uh, the number of quests that you complete actually uh, does affect the... The number of uh, quests that you complete affects how likely you are to get the next step which is the the governor asking for an audience uh, with you 
Okay, uh, we reached our destination, which is nowhere to be found, so we're gonna have to navigate to it again. There we go. Okay. Rocket Wing Obway, 500. We can slow it down again. So we'll go to the Council of Elders, pay our taxes, collect our reward, easy money. This place doesn't have a shipyard either. Um, and they don't seem to follow the fantasy trope of remote small towns having superior equipment. Uh, so we don't want to accept that job. Uh, we do want to go to the tavern. That's a very, that is a very early, early 90s hairstyle. All right, an illithid slaver ship was recently captured, has recently captured the daughter of a wealthy landowner. He has consulted magical sources of information and determined that the mind flayers have already killed his, da his daughter. So rather than a rescue, he desires vengeance. He has managed to learn the whereabouts of the ship, but he does not have the means to get there. He would be willing to reward you if you could find the slaver ship and eradicate it. They were last seen near planet Anadia. You will be paid 6,150 gold upon completion of this mission. We are not going to accept that job. We're going to actually leave. Uh, because we don't want to deal with that right now. And 6,000 gold for a slaver ship is not great. Um, but we want to get out of these like outer planets. We want to go back to uh, Toril right now. Less than an hour. Perfect. There we are. Back at Toril. Uh, because we have a decent ship and a lot of money now, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna save the game yet again. And we're gonna dock and upgrade our ship. Hopefully, pay taxes. So uh, we need new recruits. Nine sailors. Yes, <laughs> this guy with his bottle of wine. All right, uh, we're gonna go to the harbor master. Oh no, wait, it's the dry dock that we need. No wait, this this does both. Uh, we need to repair our hull. We need to repair our armament if we haven't. Uh, we need to. Wow, two hundred and fifty thousand gold for a major helm. That's gonna be. Uh, difficult to deal with uh, but I don't actually know what the <laughs> he'll buy our ship for 2500 gold hmm I don't think we want to do that um, but we do want to modify the hull what do we want to do we want to change the materials oh we are not ready to do this uh, but we can do netting and rigging and uh, uh, armor plate cargo would not fit uh, let's not do that stuff just yet okay uh, we're gonna go back to this guy and see if he sells anything great like longsword plus two uh, which we're going to want a whole bunch of longswords plus two and maces plus two. And so fortunately, uh, despite the fact that he says he's out of stock, uh, we can just go buy. Uh, we can leave the store and come back. It's basically like the stores in uh, the broken land uh, that we can just, just reset it anytime we need to. Uh, how many swords do we have, though? We need to distribute those first. So I don't overbuy and end up with uh, useless swords. So we need to give one to Eva. We need to give one... Wait, what? Th we need to give one to Crystal Cloverleaf. Uh, we need to figure out... 
how I did that. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm pressing enter, and it's like changing my equipment somehow. I think it's just a visual bug, though, unfortunately. Tisha Lendeloft. Crystal Cloverleaf. I think that's it. And then Erica Ravenhair and Jasmine Blossom need the maces. Yeah, get that mace. Uh, cancel that. Give this mace back to Berserker. Mace plus one. Trade. No. Ah, I keep doing that. It's not trade, it's give. Give that mace back to Berserker. And why do our clerics have robes? That doesn't make any sense. We'll fix that in a minute. Uh, we don't need to do anything with our with our mages yet. I'll give this back to Berserker. Give that to Berserker. Excellent. Uh, crystal clover leaf. Give to Berserker. Oh, I gave Crystal Cloverleaf two swords. I may have overbought after all. Okay. Good. Letitia Lendeloft. Give to Berserker. Give that spear to Berserker as well. Uh, it's interesting, a lot of the... Um, what I think are, uh, why are you using this stuff? Uh, what I think are some of the, uh, optional rules in second edition, uh, simply aren't in this game, like weapon proficiencies, which were, uh, kind of commonplace in the second edition CRPGs, uh, just aren't here. They don't, <laughs> they don't exist. Uh, they're not used anywhere. Uh, we're going to get rid of all these short swords, spears, extra weapons that we don't need. Whoops. Uh, Erica Ravenhair. I thought s somebody had an extra weapon. That Was it Robin Swift Sail? No, I think something just disappeared. Oh well, I'm not too not too concerned with missing out on that few hundred gold. Uh, potion of healing, scale mail plus one. I don't think scale mail plus one is something that we want right now. Um, this guy doesn't offer any magic stuff, I don't think. But he does offer full plate, which we might want for our we might want for our fighters but oh, we don't want that just yet um, we're going to pay our crew a second time for all that stuff we're gonna save it again and we're gonna go back and see if we can talk to the Council of Lords yet we don't have an invitation. Two huge and well-dressed lizard men are seeking passage to Glyth. They approach you and ask for passage. They seem very arrogant and condescending. But they do offer to pay you 3,150 gold pieces for the trip. You paid 3,150 completion of this mission at Mingabwe on Glyth. So... I'm not going to accept that job. Because the next thing we want to do is actually, now that we have kind of enough, uh, now that we have enough money to buy most magical equipment, including the plus two stuff, I think we want to get the, uh, we want to go to the other inner planets where they have better facilities and see if we can get better magical items from there. You're going the wrong way. 
navigator. Uh, one of the biggest things in this game, I think, is is speeding up the travel. Having that ability to speed up the travel makes a huge difference in uh, in how how long it takes just to do stuff in this game because it's all dead time so it's uh it's an it's an interesting like thing that there's just all this dead space it's dead dead air that they put into the uh put into the game uh what do we want d and b okay so we've got everyone assigned Dock at Hista, which we haven't seen yet. Hall of the People has this lizard man in it. We're going to pay our taxes that we always have to pay. Uh, there's the government warehouse where we could pick up a contract to Anadia, which we will because we'll be going there soon uh, to check out whether they have stuff. There's jam services where we can buy uh, some stuff. This is odd. So this guy's selling a Neoji Mind Spider. And the Neoji are the, uh, or Neogi, I'm not sure the pronunciation, but they are the evil presence that's invading the system. Uh, I think, I need to look at this, 40 tons, 35 tons, 17, 20. Cannot land and uses a life jammer. I don't think we want that. We want the... Yeah, we want the death spider, not the mind spider. But, uh... So the Neoji are like the evil force that's present in the system that's kind of, uh... getting organized, and that's the, the main threat uh, throughout the game for the main plot. Uh, and it's very strange that someone would just randomly have uh, an extra an extra one of their ships just hanging around. <laughs> so uh, did we already? This is the same armory that we checked. Uh, this guy with his Rambo knife up on the counter there. Uh, we want to go to the temple to see the temple guy giving some lizard sermon. Same guy from the weapons shop, but this time he's got a, uh, a red potion at his tavern. A lithid slaver ship. So we saw this before. Gonna find and eradicate near Anadia. 6950. So we'll take it this time, because we're actually going to Anadia next anyway. I found this medallion off a Mind Flare. I guess he had no further use for it. All Neoji ships are made to grab you when you get too close, and then you'll never get away. It's perfect for us. That's what we want. If you're low on air, Carpery is a good spot. It has the best view this side of heaven. Uh, so those aren't those aren't entirely uh, random. Uh, we want to hire as much crew as we possibly can now that we're getting some money. Uh, because the crew is just these expendable uh, expendable guys that deal tons of damage in combat. Uh, so we want to get as much as possible. Uh, we might be able to... Ah, no. Unfortunately not. Um, but while we're here, we're going to also uh, dock at Athanar. Pay taxes again. <laughs> Uh, because we want to check their weapon shop. We're actually going around to check. Uh, oh, and we might be able to get some recruits. No recruits. Uh, the Cutting Edge. Are you really the Cutting Edge? Do you have magical stuff? Oh, Javelin of Lightning. That's really good. It's really good, but I don't think we want it right now because they're expendable and they're... Uh, they're expensive. I guess we're not going to get any of that stuff. Um, we already have a storage. Do we already have a delivery contract? We already have a mission. Uh, so we're going to exit. And we're going to navigate to Anadia. Let's go. Let's 
go fast. Oh. Ship to port. It's a slaver. So we're just going to approach and grapple and then do the same thing that we did last time, which is kill all of their thralls and then uh, one by one take out the uh, helpless illithids. Uh, you'll notice occasionally you'll see, whoa, what? We shoot like a purple laser? We have a laser somehow. I don't know what that is. It's like going off to the side, but we have it. Oh no, we got hit. Come back here. Uh, the weapons kind of go off in whatever direction they want. You can't really do anything uh, when they fire at you, too. You're just going to take the hit or they're going to miss. Um, the worst thing is if you get hit for enough damage, uh, you'll lose helm control. And then it's basically game over. Um, Stop that. Okay. Come on, let's get in grapple range. You also have to grapple really early because if you if you hit their ship without using the ram command, uh, you, you'll get just totally screwed. Um, view. What are we? What are we dealing with here? We have humans and elves. Elves share the same sprite as halflings, which is confusing. Uh, some gnomes. Uh, so these guys are the real threat. We know that from before. All right. Let's see what we can do with this. Uh, we can do this. This will be perfect. Cast lightning bolt. Right there. Oh, this is gonna, oh yes. Oh, it took out all of them. <laughs> oh, MVP. Who was that? Who did that? Julia Valador. MVP. Uh, can you target there? I guess we're going to wait. We're going to wait that out because we might be able to get... lineup of dudes. Can we? Can we get a line? Mm. If it bounces, if it bounces the correct way and not the... What? What? <laughs> I killed some humans? What is going on? Oh, you better run, dude. You're, oh, let's see. If I go up here, let's see if this will do it. Yeah. Oh, did we hit the gnome? We hit the gnome. Awesome. Uh, and it said we killed some... Oh, oh. All right. Oh, well, that's a crash. That's, that sucks. Well, oh man, that's rough. All right, all right. I think that's, I think that's gonna be as much Spelljammer Pirates of Realm Space as I can take tonight. We'll have to hunt down the slavers uh, another time. But uh, let me close this down and find somebody to host. I don't know who's still with us, but uh, we'll find something. Let's see here. No channels live. That's a shame. I don't suppose anyone in chat is actually going to be uh, streaming anything shortly. 
we can get treated to macaws, uh, Quo Vetus, or uh, the, the other one that I can't recall. I also feel like, I don't know if my chat is updating properly. But, uh, I don't know anyone who's playing this stuff. And none of the people I follow are playing. Let's try to find something weird. Looks like some weird bot. Uh, I'll do what I usually do when I can't find anything and pick a Korean stream. So yeah, let's let's do that. We're going to go to insert coin o one o six. playing some retro game so let's uh, let's host this channel awesome all right well hope everyone had a good night and i will catch you later